Morning guys, this is Rich Robin. Yep, don't look like the typical Rich Robin y'all see in the other videos. I'm actually at my home today. This is a Saturday, uh, October 7th, I believe. Uh, we're about 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, out here drinking coffee. I'm fixing to get my captivator fired up here. I'm going to try to do a little quick video. It wasn't planned. Uh, I just wanted to bring my captivator home, and, and which is behind me here. It's a 24 by 60 two-door. Uh, Four slide trays, tuning plates, sits on a single axle, 3,500 pound uh, trailer. And this is also the one that we rent uh, on the weekends and daily rentals at my shop. But uh, you're gonna see me just being myself out here at the house. I've done a couple videos like this before, last minute. I figured if I'm out here cooking, I might as well whip out the camera and, and uh, sit it on a tripod and just kind of show you guys me and my natural element at home and, and not at work and not all formal. and and drinking my coffee and wearing my son's Packers uh, uh, football shirt because we got a uh, football game at, uh, I think we got to be there at 11, game kickoffs at noon. He plays, uh, he's 12 years old, so he plays for the Katy Youth League uh, football, KYF football. And uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to get this thing fired up. It doesn't have gas like you've seen in my previous videos of my pit that I cook on, uh, the Riches Edition. This one doesn't have gas. <clears throat> I, I'm going to uh, show you what I'm going to do to light this thing up uh, real easy. Uh, and yes, I am going to leave around 10.30 to go to the, my son's football game by 11. I won't be back here until probably 2 o'clock, give or take. I'm going to have a brisket on this pit uh, before I leave. And I am going to let it run while I'm gone at 3 or 4 hours. And uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It's a gator pit. It's that simple. Anybody that has my pits knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's not the nightmare offset that people uh, uh, have experienced with retail bought uh, cookers, um, China-made cookers, so to speak. Uh, these are a different ball game, different animal from those. Um, I've got my tail true gauges in here. It's the first time I put the tail true gauges in this particular pit. Uh, again, it's my rental pit. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to put $50, $60 gauges in here because when people rent this pit, man, they, they cook on it like they stole it. Um, it always comes back with something wrong with it, and I just, uh, I'd rather throw in uh, the, the older gauges that, that are in there. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked again. I'm out here informal, just talking to you. So I'm gonna try not to get off on some tangent conversations that uh, you're sitting there going, what the hell is he talking about? Uh, I've got a dual Iron Chef burner over here that I'm gonna use to light my charcoal basket. I've got some Kingsford charcoal in here. And I'm going to set this on my burner over there, as opposed to using paper like they recommend with these charcoal chimneys. If you've got one of these turkey fryers or Gator Pit Dill Iron Chef burner, any kind of burners that we make, or any kind of burner for that matter, uh, you can probably do what I'm doing now, depending on what, what design you have. Uh, it makes it easy. It lights that charcoal really fast, matter of minutes. And then I'm going to dump that in my 24 by 24 round firebox. I have a very small pile of charcoal in there. When I dump this, uh, hot charcoal it's going to be on top of a very small pile of charcoal probably 10 15 briquettes in there maybe at most and then I'm gonna put some wood on top of that and then I'm gonna go inside and prep my brisket in fact I have to go to the store and buy a brisket this is how last minute this was so when I get my fire going I'm gonna run the HEB and go pick up uh, a prime uh, hopefully I can find a decent prime uh, around 12 pounds give or take and uh, I figure while I'm cooking a brisket, I might as well go ahead and throw in a couple of racks of ribs and some sausage. Uh, this is a last minute practice for my Gator Pit Barbecue School cook-off coming up on October 22nd of 2016. So here in a couple of weeks, I've got a, a, a full class of students from around, the, around it, from everywhere coming in and uh, expecting me to show them how to cook the perfect, perfect barbecue. Well, like any athlete or anybody else that's in any type of competition or professional uh, 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 job is you practice. Practice makes perfect. I do cook. I cook all the time. Um, the last thing you want to do is have people pay you for a cooking class and then you get out there and your timing's off, uh, your brisket, your tenderness is off. Uh, you're just, you can't do that. It's, it, you just can't do that. So uh, I practice, 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 practice. So this is the pit that we cook on for the class. I also cook on my Rich's Edition that y'all seen me cook on here at the house. It's now at my shop.
and uh, we'll be cooking on that for the cooking class because people love to see my personal pit and uh, fired up and actually in action. So I'll bring that to the shop so that uh, my students can see me cooking on the Rich's Edition and we'll also have this Captivator. So when you attend my class, uh, GatorPitBBQSchool.com, when you attend my class, you're going to see uh, a, a nice sized offset smoker in action, being our Captivator, and you're going to see a backyard pit, a nice sized backyard pit in action. Um, and there's no BS, man. I've got students there that are paid to see me cook on these pits. I can't hide anything when they're sitting there watching me. I follow me all day long. So everything that I tell you in these videos, everything that you see in all the hundred and something videos I've done over the, the, the 20 years in business uh, is not BS, guys. It, it's the real deal. Uh, I'm a guy that's been building and designing barbecue pits since I was 14 years old. I am 50 years old as of July this past year, or July this year. Um, that's a long time, guys. I've had my company now going on 20-something years. I started it back in the early 90s, uh, incorporated, I believe, in around 95, and uh, we've been going full-time. That's all I do is design and build barbecue pits. Uh, we've got clients that, that literally are worldwide. We ship all over the, all over the globe. You name it, we, we've shipped a gator pit to it. Uh, Thailand, Hong Kong, Russia, Australia, Sweden, Scotland, UK, um, Finland, Norway, Australia. A pit to an uh, aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean, guys. Uh, we we shipped, built it, and shipped it to Barksdale Air Force Base. From there, they put it on a big carrier and uh, went straight out there to the uh, to, to the to the aircraft carrier. Uh, I've had a show called King of Your Grill on Discovery Channel. It also aired on Destination America. Uh, it was a one-hour episode that we did. It was a pilot. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, politics, whatever it is, it, 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 uh, we didn't go to season on it. To be honest, it's fine with me because it was a lot of work and ain't a whole lot of money in those shows unless you're Duck Dynasty. <laughs> well, we're not Duck Dynasty. Uh, so it, 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 uh, it was fun while we did it. We built the space, sh uh, space shuttle pit barbecue. Uh, you'll see that on the YouTube channels. Uh, it still runs and airs uh, on Destination America and also uh, uh, Discovery Channel. Uh, you'll see it uh, sometimes during the weekdays. It'll run in the mornings, uh, and then in, they run it in the, in the weekend sometimes. You'll see it in the mornings or late night. Uh, so it still airs. It still runs. People still call me and, 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 and hey, I saw you, your show and want to talk to you about a pit. Um, it's a, it was a cool show. Uh, it was fun. Um, I was, I think, the first actual custom pit designer or builder that actually had a one hour TV show just about me and my company. I don't think there was any other designers out there that are well known that, that's actually done that at that time. Now they've had some come out now uh, in the past year or two, especially since the Pitmaster show came out and all that. So I guess with all that introduction, and most of y'all probably know me anyway that's watching my YouTube channels, um, I'm about out of coffee, so I think I'm going to make me another cup of coffee out of my Keurig and uh, come out here and fire this burner up. I'll put the camera on it so you can see what I do. Uh, so I need to get all this going, get my fire going in my pit. I need to run an HEB grocery, pick up a prime. Hopefully they got what I like. I went to Costco last night on my way home. They had three briskets in the, in the, in the, uh, in the cooler and they were all 15 and a half pounds up to like 18 pounds. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there's no way in hell I'm cooking a 15 pound brisket. 12 pounds, give or take, yeah, I might go as high as 13. By the time I trim that thing down, you know, I'll be around a 10, nine pound brisket, which is fine with me. I'm not cooking all dang day or all night. I'm not gonna do that. And this is things that I teach you in my cooking class as well. So when you tell my cooking class, we're gonna cook a 12 pound brisket, we're gonna take a 12, 13 pound brisket, and we're gonna start cooking about nine, 9.30 in the morning with that brisket on the pit, and also pork butts, 10 pound butts. And we're gonna have all those big old honking pieces of meat. They'll be done between four and five o'clock. All right, and they're gonna be tender, they're gonna be juicy, they're gonna be great tasting. And a lot of people think you have to cook those meats that 15, 20, 18 hours. 
you know no you don't I mean you can if you want to work that long and wait that long for a, a great tasting piece of meat you can cook these larger cuts of meat and not cook them that long you can do it in an eight-hour period uh, I'm not going to show you all of my techniques of what I do because that's why I have a cooking class and and you're welcome to to attend that cooking class go to www.gatorpitbarbecueschool.com or go to my pit website at gatorpit.net there's a link to my cooking class webpage uh, and there's information on there on what we do and 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 it's a great class we have a 100 percent customer satisfaction and that is no bs guys a 100 percent customer satisfaction i've had the gator pit school now going on i think three years we hold four classes a year uh usually they're about quarterly so we do four a year this october 22nd class is the last class for this year our next class won't be until uh, February. We're going to do a February class. February is always a good class. Uh, we usually have, believe it or not, good weather in Houston at the time we hold the class. It's cool, It's uh, but you always risk that chance of, uh, uh, you know, extreme cold weather. In Houston, that means, you know, upper 30s <laughs> and a uh, uh, chance of rain. But we've been lucky the, the past three years or going on three years with those February classes that we've had weather like it is right now today. And this is beautiful, y'all. This is uh, man, this is great weather. Uh, it's cool and, and, and it's sunny and it's a great day for a football game at noon today for my son. Let me go in there and get me a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera off, uh, grab my coffee, come back out here. We'll fire my dual Iron Chef burner up, which I love, by the way. You'll see that on the website. This thing's great for boiling and frying and just, just cooking a pot of rice or a pot of beans, uh, frying fish, uh, man, wings. I use it for gumbos. Uh, a lot of foods you don't want to cook inside. You'd rather cook outside. And if it's a nice day like today, man, it's great cooking on a, on a uh, dual iron chef burner uh, out here. Uh, I've got them running 160,000 BTUs on each burner. You'll see it here in a minute. I've got control valves in the front. It is a uh, uh, just a sweet cooking machine, frying and, and, and boiling machine. Uh, we do boil shrimp on it, uh, potatoes, corn, etc. You'll see it. This dual iron chef you're fixing to see is going on 11 years old. I've been in this house going on 11 years old. And when I moved here, I built the dual iron chef burner for here. And of course I had to have me a gator pit. So I built the smoker for here as well. And, but I've gone through several smokers uh, in those 10 years that I've been here in this house. Uh, most recently is my Rich's Edition. It's on my website. Uh, but this, I've never changed the dual iron chef. It, it, it's not that I ever had, I had a reason to have to change my smokers, but like anything, you get excited when you get a new car, you get excited when you get a new motorcycle. I get excited when I get a new pit, just like all my customers do. I, you know, I cook on one for two or three years, and then I sell it, and then I, I design and build me another one. Um, that's my excitement. The dual iron chef, it stays here. It's not, I don't sell it, I'm not gonna sell it, or I'm, well, maybe, hell, everything's at a price, but, but uh, I haven't any, any reason to get rid of it. It does everything I need to do. Uh, I use it uh, probably three, four times a month. Uh, and uh, anyway, you'll see it in a minute. I'm, I'm getting off on that, just rambling now, so I'm just trying to not do the rambling. But again, I got my Captivator. This is also our rental pit. You'll see this on the website. We rent it daily, and we also rent it uh, weekend rentals. Uh, we also do a week rental, um, so it's great for companies that are doing company picnics or events. It's great for churches, for small catering for the churches, or needing an additional pit to cook at the church. Uh, and I say this because these are the people that rent this pit. Competition cookers, believe it or not, I've had a lot of people renting this pit to go do a competition. And I've actually had the rental pit before this, a guy rented it and went to a competition in, in South Houston, I think Pasadena, somewhere around there. Freeport, somewhere in South Houston, and came back and won grand champion. He got first place in brisket and placed in the ribs and the chicken. And when he came back, he walked out of his truck, grabbed his trophies, and he had this big, tall GC trophy about this tall and set it down. And we came out, and he was as happy as, 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 as all get out. And he actually offered <laughs> or requested for me to sell him my rental pit. And like I said, everything's got a price tag. He bought it. We never even took it off his truck when he brought it back to drop it off and rent it. He kept it on his truck and drove off. He knew he was buying it. 
And uh, that's a great story. I mean, it, those are Gator Pit customers, man. They, they, they love my pits. They love my pits. Uh, those are true testimonies that, that I just I don't make those up, man. You, you Google, Google Gator Pit, uh, barbecue pits, Google Gator Pit of Texas, Google Rich Robin, uh, and, and hit all those barbecue forums, and, and you'll see people that there's no complaints. Everybody loves my pits. Uh, they're great design. They're efficient for an offset. They're extremely efficient for an offset. Uh, and they're heavy. They're heavy duty. There are pits that's going to last you a lifetime. Give them a little love and care, a little TLC, and, and you'll never buy another pit. Uh, you might replace, replace a fire tray or fire grate, but that's a consumable in any cooker, any smoker that you're going to buy or grill. Uh, they're just, those fire grates are going to go out. You, this fire grate in here, it'll run you like a $75 to $125 to replace it. This one's six years old. I've replaced it once in six years. And again, I cook on this thing all the time, and it's also rented. And it's gone almost every weekend, depending on the, on the time of the year. Uh, this is the only weekend this month that I was able to do this, other than my rent, my, rent, my class. But if I didn't reserve it for my cooking class, it would probably have been rented. So I have to reserve my own pit to, in order to cook on it. So I'm gonna go in there and get my coffee. And then I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna come back out here and we're gonna fire all this stuff up. We're gonna get a fire going because I need to go to the store, get a brisket, get back here, get the brisket rubbed, get it on the pit, and then I need to get my boy to the football game, and then I'll I'll do some video and before we leave for the game. Uh, and then I'll shut the camera off and then hit the game and then round two ish and I'll give you time when I get back. I'll give you time when I'm leaving, I'll give you time when I get back. And uh, before I leave, I'll probably throw a couple of logs in the pit. I'm not worrying about burning my brisket because it's an offset smoker, and it's a big offset smoker. This thing's five feet long from the firebox, okay? So I can throw my brisket over here when I leave, all right, furthest from the firebox, throw me two or three logs in there, and I know that thing's going to still be chugging along when I get back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got my coffee. Community, Louisiana coffee. Good stuff. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. But uh, here we got my iron chef, dual iron chef. I've got a stainless steel top on it that uh, kind of keeps the weather off the burners. So 304 brush. It's dirty because it's got you know grime on it. It's got gator pit etch etched into the middle of it there. You can see, maybe see it there. I don't know. But it's a nice brush 304 stainless. I'm going to set it on the side here and we're going to fire this thing up. And you can tell it is used, obviously used, and used a lot. I've got my charcoal chimney here. I think this is like a little four pound chimney. It's not a big one. I'm gonna set it up here. And you better watch your nose there, dog. You're gonna get burnt. We have my coffee, so I don't have to reach over my burners. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Anyway, let's fire this sucker up. Let's get some charcoal going. So we can get a pit going. There you go. Should be able to see that. Yeah, you can see that. We'll get this thing going here in a little bit. It's already starting to smoke. You can see that. This thing's uh, crazy. Crank it up. You can hear it. This will not take long. Again, this is a Gator Pit Dual Iron Chef Burner. 160,000 BTUs in one burner. There's this another one over here. It's got dial style valves on it, little needle valves. I'm running through half inch gas pipe and uh, also running some copper lines. Windshield around it. The new dual iron shafts, again, this one's going on 11 years old. The new dual iron shafts have a detachable wall. So these three panels actually will come off. Uh, if you want just the back panel on, you can leave it, but there are three individual panels that actually slide in and lock in place. This one is completely welded. At the time, uh, I didn't think that I would ever need to remove the panels, and I actually haven't needed to ever remove the panels. Uh, but the ones that we make now, they are removable on the three panels. Somebody somewhere may need to do that. I haven't, and going on 11 years, I haven't needed to. Uh, this thing will hold big pots as it is, and you can see it's already going, guys. You're not going to wait long to get this thing started, to get your charcoal going. <laughs> Grab my coffee. And yeah, we'll get it going good. Uh, we'll let it sit for a little while, let the top get ignited a little bit, and then we'll dump it in our firebox over there in the captivator.
and it's good hot coffee in the morning, especially when it's cool outside. So I'm gonna turn the camera off rather than waiting on this. No point in burning disc and batteries for, I don't know, maybe three or four minutes we're gonna do this. So I'll turn it back on when I get ready to dump this into the firebox. All right, everybody. I think we're about eight minutes on this, getting it hot. Um, and you can see the, the gas is off now, but you can see the flame actually coming out now. And uh, I'm gonna let it get a little longer, burn just maybe another minute before I actually dump it. Uh, let the top of the coals get uh, a little a little red, which is almost there. It's red to about right here, and you can kind of see the coloration of the can, I think, where it's getting kind of white up here. I don't know if that was there before. I don't think it was. Um, but about eight minutes on a, on a burner like this, if you have one at home, or if you have one of mine, and a, a small, I think a four-pound charcoal chimney. And that'll get your charcoal lit, your briquettes, Kingsford in this case, and I'm going to dump it in the, in the firebox over there. And I think I'll dump it now. You can see the flames are really coming out. I think the video may be picking that up. It should. But there's yellow flames coming out, and you can see the embers coming out, too. So I'm going to turn the camera off, put my coffee cup down. I'm going to dump it in my firebox, put a couple of logs in there, and uh, get this pit fired up, get it going. And I'm going to run to HEB Grocery and go grab my, my brisket and my ribs and some sausage. I'll see you all here in a little bit. I figured I'd bring this around just to show you what I just dumped in there and you can see there what I did. Let me adjust my camera here. That is the charcoal chimney that I just dumped in there. And I'm going to put some logs on there. And you'll notice that my logs are going to be a little wet from the morning dew. And I have bark on them. And I don't care. Some people tell you take the bark off, it over smokes, it does this, it does that. Uh, you know what? I've been cooking <laughs> forever and it's never really bothered me that I had bark on my wood. And again, you see how wet this is. That charcoal is going to dry that out real quick because this is good seasoned hickory wood. I'm going to lay two like that where you've got some space between them so you get a good clean burning fire. And on this pit, being a 2448, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using my 2448, being a 24 by 60 long with a 24 by 24 round firebox, I know what it's going to take to get this thing to the temperatures that I want. I'm going to throw a little log up on top and cross that just like that. Come here, Colt. Get out the way. Down that side, son. Watch your nose. And we're going to leave the door open, let it get a lot of oxygen to it, and... Uh, <laughs> Come here, boy. He likes to play with the embers that fly, especially at night when he can really see them. He likes to chase them and snap at them. Um, dogs, you gotta love them, right? Um, so, we'll let this get lit. It may take just a little longer because of the wet wood, being that it's not seasoned, uh, not wet as in not seasoned wood. It's wet from the sitting out overnight, and also I think my sprinklers hit it last night. <coughs> I ran my sprinklers last night and, and uh, I'm pretty sure one of them bombarded it. But that's okay. The wood itself is seasoned, so it's not going to take much to get it dried out real quick and get, get going. I'm not worrying about it because i got to go H-E-B and get a brisket anyway. So I'm going to let it sit like this for a little while, and then I'm going to close my door, leave my air intake vents open. I'm going to leave my stack up there fully open, and I'm going to run to the store. So I will see you guys here when I get back, and uh, we'll have the pit to temp and we'll get some meat on it, and then I'll go to a football game. Um, leave your door open, get all your oxygen to your fire, the initial fire when you get it going, and it won't take but a, a few minutes to actually get where you, what you see now. The logs are actually lighting. You see some yellow flames. Um, you see some smoke coming out the stack. When that fire gets really good and going, you should have a, a more clean burning fire where you don't see a whole lot of smoke, just a very light hint of smoke, blue smoke. Um, which is what you see now. This is blue smoke. I don't know how much the camera's picking up, but this smoke is actually a, a blue, in, blue in color. But once you get a good clean burning fire started, it's running your initial fire, then you can close your doors up. And I'm going to do that here in a little bit because I need to go to HEB 
and get my briskets and my ribs and my sausage to get back here to get rubbed and put on the pit because I got to leave here, like I said earlier, at 1030 to uh, get my boy the football field by 11 so that they can warm up for the kickoff at, uh, at 12. And it's, it's 856 right now, so I need to get cruising. Um, I will see you guys back here shortly. I'll turn the camera on when I get back, and uh, we'll be putting some meat on here. See you. All right, guys, I'm back from HEB getting my meat. And we have right now, the time is 10.02. I think I've been gone an hour, I think. And in that hour, let me show you what these gauges look like. So y'all remember what I did when I left, right? I had those little charcoal chimney dumped in there. Had my fire uh, logs put on top of the, the charcoal. Uh, I think it was three, two in there lengthwise, one crossed. Move this camera over, show you what these gauges are reading. Look at that, guys. They're running 250. Left side, 250. Right side, about 252. Again, guys, I don't make this stuff up. I'm not editing any of this stuff to trick anybody. This is the real deal. This is Gator Pit. You notice you don't see any smoke pouring out my stack. You don't see any smoke coming out my doors. This is what Gator Pit does, y'all. It is a offset smoker that is extremely easy to cook on. You learn it, takes you a few cooks, but you will have the same results that I'm showing you right now in this video. Again, this is not a planned video. I just decided to shoot this thing last minute, unplanned, and I'm just kind of winging it. But I want to show you that there's no leaks in my gator pit and this captivator, look at the doors, Good clean burning fire and the temperature gauges are spot on guys. It doesn't get any better than that on an offset smoker. This is why customers wait to get a custom gator pit from me. Now I'm going to go rub my brisket. I wanted to buy a butt. I couldn't pass it up. I saw it and just my mouth just watered for some pulled pork. So I'm going to cook a pork butt with it as well. So I'll see you here in a little bit. All right, guys. Y'all saw that just now. I'm chuckling because it's, it's that easy on a gator pit, guys. It's that easy. Build a fire, clean burning fire, adjust your pit accordingly to run a good clean burning fire, good, good unrestricted airflow, seasoned wood, go to the store for an hour, come back, and your pit is at 250 degrees left and right. These are brand new gauges. I just put them in yesterday afternoon before I left the shop with this pit. I haven't calibrated them. They should need calibrating. They're tell true gauges. Uh, tell true, is, as y'all probably have, uh, have looked and researched if you haven't, check them out. They are the most well known temperature gauge company uh, in the barbecue pit industry. This is what everybody wants. Everybody wants tell true gauges. I have tell true now making our gator pit gauges for us, as you can see from the gator logos in there. Excellent gauges, spot on, plus or minus one degrees, guaranteed uh, 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 calibration on them. And uh, I offer two models, by the way. Uh, one can be recalibrated, one can't. They're about $10 difference between the two, but you can call me and uh, order them. We can, uh, you can either pick them up at my shop or we can actually ship them out to you, uh, FedEx Ground. Call me for the pricing at my shop. You can go to my website, go to my website at gatorpit.net and actually go to my shopping cart, click on the store, and you can order these online, and we usually ship them out within 24 hours to 48 hours from the time you order them, depending on the day of, that you order them. Order them in the morning, they'll probably get shipped out the next day. You order them late in the afternoon, they'll be shipped out within 48 hours. Uh, but give us a call, 713-896-0144. Ask for me or my assistant, and uh, we can get your order over the phone, or you can do it online through my shopping cart or my online store. It's that simple. Uh, all right, I'm going to go in there and get my... My, uh, my brisket ready, and then I'm gonna get my pork butt ready, like I mentioned earlier. I, they had the pork butt sitting right next to the briskets. Uh, I couldn't pass it up. I saw the putt, and I'm like, uh, man, why not get some pulled pork up in here while I'm cooking? I got plenty of pit to do it on. So today, give you an idea of what I bought when I'm cooking, I've spent about $85 today, maybe 90 bucks, on the pork butt, the uh, prime brisket, uh, which I didn't like. 
they again I don't know what the deal with brisket right now is but they only had a selection of four uh, and out of the four only three of those were primes and I got the, the smallest one I could find that actually looked the best and uh, I think it was 15 plus pounds so I still got stuck with a 15 plus pound brisket which I don't like to cook but that's okay there's some things I can do with it that I'm gonna keep it uh, uh, I'm gonna trim it down a little bit and, not, and I'm not gonna trim it to a flat. I don't want to waste all that prime But uh, I will trim some of the fat off of it and uh, we'll speed the cooking time up of it And I'll have it ready for dinner tonight. Uh, I got some guests coming over I invited and uh, I figured I got all this food. I need somebody to eat it and then what's what's left over We're just gonna vacuum seal it and throw it in the freezer and and uh, my son from college will come in tomorrow probably and take it home and he and his roommates will be eating barbecue for the rest of the week all right guys i'm back we are uh i think it's right at 1105 when i checked uh i mentioned i was gonna have to leave about 10 30 to get my my boy to the football uh game an hour early before it starts at noon but my wife went ahead and took him and i'm gonna meet him up there at 12. so when i finish shooting this little clip i'm gonna haul butt and get out there so i get, uh, catch the uh, the kickoff it took a little longer because i had to trim that big old 15 plus pound brisket down because I'm not going to cook a big old 15, 16 pound brisket. That will take a very long time. So it took a little longer trimming, plus I wasn't planning on cooking a, uh, uh, an eight, nine pound pork butt, and I had to uh, prep that as well with a little trimming and, and then you know, rub and, and season that thing up too. So it uh, took a little longer than I thought. I'm just winging this, man. Uh, I've got the, the brisket on, and I've got a pork butt on, and uh, I think the brisket was, like I said, a little over 15 pounds. Uh, the, the pork butt uh, was a little over eight, nine pounds about. At most, uh, I usually average a 10 pound butt. But you know, when you get to the store, unless you want to drive all around town, find exactly what you want, you go with what you can get. And I'd already gone to Costco last night, and I wasn't driving to a third store today. I just didn't have the time. Um, with that said, if you're at the store and you see the briskets and the butts or the ribs that you like, go ahead and get them then. Throw them in the freezer, man. That way you're not doing what I'm doing right now, last minute, trying to find your, your, what, you, what you consider the perfect meat for you to cook. I'm picky with my, my food. And I'm real picky when it comes to the class. So knowing what I went through yesterday and today, <clears throat> preparing or practicing for my class coming up, I'm gonna go ahead and start looking come Monday uh, and hitting the, the grocery stores and finding the, what I consider the perfect briskets and butts and all that so that I'm not last minute uh, having to get stuck with what I don't like to cook. And that's big honking briskets uh, the, the butt was fine. Uh, I can deal with the butt eight, nine pounds fine. It's the brisket that I'm more concerned about getting what I want. The ideal perfect br brisket for me is around 12 pounds and a prime. Uh, that was tough between two stores a day uh, in, in your selection. But I've got them on. We're running uh, with the two pieces of uh, cold meat in here being the, the butt on top and the brisket on the bottom. I'm still running about 252 uh, with that cold meat that's put in there. This side over here is running 275. And you may be asking, well, why is there a 25 degree difference now or 23 degree difference when earlier it was an even temperature? Well, think about what I just said. Cold meat over here. That temperature is picking up that cold air coming off that cold meat. So it's going to drop it down. Doesn't mean your pit's not running to the temperature that you had before you put the meat in there. You just have to give it time to get that meat and start warming it up before you see this gauge and this gauge on the skater pit start to even out again. And it won't take long, probably 30 minutes, and then you'll start seeing these gauges even out again. But it's not that the pit isn't running even, it's running even. So if you get a gator pit and that happens to you, don't start adjusting plates and tuning plates and throwing fire in the fire box and jacking with your stack. Leave it alone. Let it do what it's designed to do. And that's to make cooking easier for you. Don't complicate it, okay? The cook, the person using the pit is what's gonna complicate cooking on a gator pit, not the pit. 
It goes back to what I said earlier. Practice, practice, practice. Learn your pit. If guys, those of y'all watching my YouTube video don't have a gator pit, the, the, that still holds for you guys as well, okay? You have to learn your pit. Cook on it, learn it, practice it, and then you'll master it. When you master it, your cooking becomes easier. I'm not saying it's gonna be this easy as me cooking on this gator pit, but you're gonna make it as easy as possible that you can on that type of pit that you're cooking on. Um, with that said, I'm gonna put, so you know what I'm doing, because I'm fixing to be gone. It's, uh, what, 11, maybe 15 now? I don't have my cell phone on me. Fixing to leave, head to the ball game. I'll be back, the game should be over with. I should be back around two-ish, like I said, and maybe 2.30ish. Uh, I'm gonna put, just so y'all know what I'm gonna do to keep this pit running so I know it's good. I'm not worried about my meat burning. It's just not gonna happen on this pit. Uh, I've got it on the farthest side, um, and it's not sitting directly over the heat deflector plate that's on that side, uh, so it's not gonna get bombarded with a lot of radiant heat off of that plate that's directly below the meat. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's fine where it is. Uh, and I'm doing that just as a precaution because no one's gonna be here to tend this pit for the next two and a half, three hours. I'm gonna put two logs in here and you're thinking, wow, he's 250 now, he's gonna be 400 degrees. No, I'm not, I might run up, it might run up to 300 uh, on this end with that cold meat, maybe. Uh, and that's fine because it won't run at 300 for long because guess what's going to happen over the next two and a half, three hours? It's going to slowly burn down, burn down, burn down, burn down. But I'm certainly going to be fine and not worrying about my meat burning on me. And what's the worst case scenario? So I'm 180, 190, throw two logs in it. <laughs> Get it back up to your cooking temperature, okay? Not a big deal. Again, when you're cooking on these pits, don't stress over anything. It's extremely easy, guys. And if you know what I know from just years of cooking, you, you don't stress over cooking, period. And I don't care whether that's in catering or competition or just cooking like I'm cooking now, and I'm on video. You know, if, if you want to stress, get stressed out, put yourself on video and have millions and millions and millions of people that view your channel hear you talking about what I'm talking about now. And this isn't scripted, this isn't planned, this is just me talking. Um, so with that said, I gotta go. I'll be back shortly, as fast as I can. When I get back, we'll fire the camera back up uh, and we'll get some ribs on. We're gonna throw some ribs in there too. I figured again, while I'm cooking, I might as well just keep on cooking some meat. I got a big old pit, let's, let's get some meat on this thing. I can't help but not cook. Um, Rich Robin, I'll see y'all in about two hours or so. All right, guys, Rich here. I'm back from my son's football game. I'm gone exactly three hours. It's like uh, 2.05 right now. Uh, I left here, what, 11? Uh, right around 11 o'clock. And we won the game 24 to nothing, by the way. My son played excellent. Uh, he's wide receiver. He caught his passes. Uh, he also plays defense and uh, did some, uh, some tackles, or not tackles, yeah, tackles. But uh, anyway, we are back, and we are running 150 and about 160. 150 here, 160 here. Keep in mind the meat's still over here. Guys, I haven't touched anything other than I did open my firebox door and throw uh, a couple of little split logs in there, get my tip back up, which won't take, take it long. But it did exactly what I, what I expected it to do, and that was, uh, Burn down, get cooler. Uh, I think I mentioned maybe somewhere around 200 I would be. Uh, I think I even mentioned actually 180, somewhere around there. But uh, we're 155 here, and uh, we're 150, 152 over here. Uh, pretty much expected the temperature to drop. Obviously, it's an offset. It's been sitting for three hours unattended. Show all this. The meat is looking good. I'm gonna go in there and mix up a little spritz that I like to use uh, and, and spritz on my meat. Uh, it's that time now. The rubs have all dried up. Uh, we're getting some bark going there, as you can see. Pull this out. Getting some bark going here on the edges. And uh, close it up, let it get back to temp. I'm going to go inside, mix up my spritz, 
and uh, what else we got? And I'm gonna look at what time I'm gonna put my ribs on, depending on what time my guests are gonna be arriving. So I want to kind of time all this to be cooked uh, and off the pit at the same time, keeping in mind that the ribs uh, are gonna need to go on pretty soon uh, because they're gonna take me probably three and a half to four hours to cook at the most. I can have them done realistically in about two and a half hours, but I'm gonna go three and a half, four hours. Uh, I want to make sure I get that cartilage and all that broke down and uh, on the knuckles, uh, what's left in there, even though they're St. Louis. Uh, but I like to soften all that that that, that up. Um, just makes for a better bite, better rib, better bite. And I will see you guys here in a little bit. Again, I'm going to go inside, call my friends, find out what time they're going to be here. And uh, that's it, man. Again, I'm not stressing. I'm not panicking. Temps, was it 150, 152, 155 when I got over here? After being gone three hours, you don't see me freaking out. Uh, it ain't a big deal, man. Uh, I've got nothing but time today. But again, I don't want to be here till midnight cooking. And even though I stepped away for three hours, I'm not worrying about it. We'll probably have all this stuff done. I'm guessing uh, it's what two after a little after two. We'll probably have all this done uh, about six six thirty. Uh, we should be eating, and uh, we'll see if I guess that right. And I'll see y'all here in a little bit. All right, guys, went in there and mixed up my little concoction right here that I've got that I'm going to spray my, my meat with or spritz my meat with. You can use any concoction that you find on the Internet and that you like. Uh, it can be apple juice. It can be a, a combination of different things. Leoparins mixed with the apple juice, whatever y'all want to do. No, it's this taste, guys. It's all about taste. And, it, uh, you know, a little moisture to the meat while it's cooking doesn't hurt either. Uh, a few hours after it's been on there, after that rub dries up a little bit, but uh, we're getting back up to temp. We're running about a 200 over here now. And uh, we're getting back up over here a little bit. It's going to take a little while for this side to catch up. Again, there's nothing over here. It's got the meat over here. So this gauge is going to take a little while to catch back up. But I'm going to open it up, give it a little spritz. Y'all can kind of see what i got going on in here. Doesn't take much. Get the back side of it. Looking good, looking real good. We'll close her back up. I'm probably gonna move that brisket over to the far right side on the bottom here. I'm gonna move that butt down to the bottom because I'm gonna come back in here shortly with some ribs and I'm gonna put the ribs up on the top racks. Uh, and again, I'm just moving this stuff to, because I'm putting other meat in there. And I like to put the meat in certain places. If you're ever cooking chickens, make sure you, you put the raw chickens in there in the beginning where there's no meat under it so the juices aren't dripping on anything under there. Uh, you don't want those raw chicken juices on there. Uh, this isn't so much a cooking video, by the way, guys. It's just showing y'all what I do when I'm cooking at home. But again, I'm, I am doing a little practice for, for the cooking class coming up. Uh, but it's, it's more for just, just keeping up with cooking, man, you know. Uh, kind of comes natural to you after after so many years and uh, I'm going inside uh, my allergies are really starting to get to me I'll probably tell them wait my attitude right now got a headache going now uh, but uh, I just took some Advil see if we can't knock this this cold I've been fighting actually uh, not cold but uh, these allergies all week and uh, I just popped a little beer over here We'll see if that don't perk up my attitude a little bit, personality. Get me back into the groove. And uh, yeah, we're getting back up there now. It's getting up there real good. So by the time I go get my ribs uh, trimmed and, and uh, prepped, uh, rubbed, this thing will be ready uh, for those ribs to go on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them on. I, you know what, let's, let's find out what the, the temperature is in these, this meat right now anyway. I'm just curious. I hadn't done that. So let's just see what we got. Out of curiosity, I know it's nowhere near. I hadn't been on there long enough. Oh yeah, it's still. So that's only 130 degrees, 131. It's nothing. 132. 135, 36. But that's fine with me, man. That's fine with me because I'm not going to wrap these things until I hit about 165, which once this pit 
gets back up to 225, 250, it won't take that long uh, before that meat right there is gonna be ready to wrap. And before that, we'll have our ribs on there. So the timing ought to come down just right and having this ready by the time I expect it to be ready. Um, just talked to my friends. Uh, they ought to be over here probably in the next hour or two. They're, they're not a rush. At the, they're actually at the Katy uh, Texas Rice Festival right now. And they have my daughter with them. So they're all out there having a good time. Uh, and I, I'm enjoying the quietness, the quiet moment now. As you can see, it's quiet. I live out in the country. Uh, 35 acres back right here. Uh, and uh, it's nice and quiet back here. So I'm enjoying it being quiet because uh, once they get here, things are going to get a little noisy. They're probably going to be jumping on the pool with the kids and all that. And uh, I'm going to sit back and enjoy watching them have fun while I have fun doing this. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit. Uh, we'll go prep my ribs. I can hear my fires really getting back up and going now because I can hear it popping in there. That's another thing you want to do when you're cooking in a pit is learn the sounds of your pit. And I know that sounds crazy to some of you guys, but those of you that have been cooking for a long, long time and cooking on a pit, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to learn how your pit feels. So your gauges at some point become obsolete. You really aren't going to need them. Between how it feels to the touch in certain areas, the sound of your firebox, like the wood popping now, I know those couple logs I put in there are now really just now starting to get going and igniting, and I'm going to close my door here in a minute. Uh, and then you hear the sizzling coming from your pit. When your pit's at a good, steady cooking temperature, if you have the tuning plates in your gator pit, you'll hear the juices dripping from your meat onto those tuning plates, and you'll hear the sizzle, a little, little hint of a sizzling sound. If you've got that going on, you're cooking, and I don't care what your gauges are saying, you can take them out, put duct tape over them, it doesn't matter. Because if you're hearing that sound coming off your tuning plates and your gator pit, you're cooking your meat. Okay? So touch, sound from your cooker. You learn those things coming from your pit, and that's from whatever pit you're cooking on too. Of course, I'm saying gator pit because it's my company and it's my pit I cook on. I'm not going to mention anybody else's pit, why would I, right? So, I'm going to go in there and get my ribs, prep them. I'm going to let them sit out for a little while. I want them to kind of get the room temp. Uh, rather than just a bunch of cold meat dumping back in there. And uh, see y'all here in a little bit. Oh, my wife just pulled up, but uh, my boy. So I will definitely see y'all here shortly. Bye. All right, guys, I want to show y'all something uh, real quick. So I'll turn the camera back on while I was doing it. If you have an expanded metal front shelf on your pit, regardless of the pit, or some other type of uh, front shelf that's not a solid shelf being solid plate or solid stainless, take some heavy-duty foil like I did here and just wrap your shelf in it. It's gonna make your cleanup a lot easier when you slide your trays out. If you have sliding trays in your, in your gator pit or your pit, <clears throat> you won't have juices drop down past the shelf into your patio. Um, I also keep a, a water hose handy. That's good for just washing stuff off before those rubs and all that get dry, sticky, because as y'all know, that's, that stuff would be like concrete sometimes. Especially when it's uh, cold, it uh, really seems like it's concrete. Uh, and cooler, cooler weather. But uh, foil your, your shelf if you don't have stainless steel. I would always recommend going with stainless uh, or a solid plate front shelf. With Gator Pit, if you go with a solid plate front shelf, you automatically go to a 12 inch front shelf. When you go to a solid plate, if you go stainless, you can go 12 inch or 14 inch in a stainless. Most people go with uh, a 12 inch. That's pretty standard. Uh, you can opt in the stainless upgrade to a 14 inch as well. So you go 12 and 14 in stainless, or you go 12 inch in the, uh, the solid plate painted black like your pit is. We only do the solid plate carbon steel painted black in a 12 inch. We don't make it any bigger or deeper. Um, foil, I did move the uh, meat to this side. I moved the brisket and the, uh, the butt to the lower shelf on this door. I'm gonna put my ribs over here just to separate the two. Another thing I want to point out, Gator Pit makes these great tools for our pits. And you can buy these for your pit as well, even if it's not a Gator Pit. This is my uniquely designed fire poker. 
And I say uniquely designed because nobody makes it like this unless they're actually copying my design, which they should not be doing, by the way. Uh, this allows you to poke, push, pull, and flip your wood. It comes with stainless steel cool touch handles, heavy duty rod, <clears throat> half inch carbon with this unique tip. Secondly, our ashray fire poker, and everybody makes ashrays and fire pokers. Uh, this isn't anything unique, really, other than it is extremely heavy duty, being a half inch carbon steel rod. It's somewhat unique in the way I designed the end of it because if you have a round fire box, it fits the contour of a round fire box. And this one's uh, a contoured for a 24 inch diameter round fire box, which is what is tagged right here. If you have a square fire box, it can also be used to clean out a square bottom or flat bottom firebox. So this allows you to do a round 24 inch diameter or a flat firebox no matter what size that is. This depth allows you to get, or most people to be able to get under the fire grate without having to remove the fire grate. Every pit's different, different manufacturers make those grates different sizes, different heights. Uh, most gator pits, this will allow you to get up underneath that fire grate, pull it out. Uh, we make them in 20 inch diameter firebox grates or, or, or ash rakes as well. Uh, but to be honest, for the most part, this will work on any 20 inch or 24, and the 20 will work on any 20 24. Uh, it may not fit quite as flush on the bottom, but it'll work on any of them, to be honest. Uh, so give Gator Pit a call. We sell these for 55 a piece. Same as still cool touch handles, don't rot, crack, break, peel. Uh, easy clean out tool, inexpensive to do, lasts forever. You buy it once, you're done with it. Uh, it's universal for the most part. And again, this is our unique fire poker. This is my design. Uh, unique tip here. This isn't like your fireplace poker. Those are great for just poking, but that's all you can do is just poke, poke your wood, poke your ash, poke your coal. This allows you to actually control the wood inside the firebox by allowing you to, one, push it, two, pull it, and three, when you stick it between two pieces of logs like this, the way it's designed, you twist it and it will flip that log over. Anyway, just wanted to show that to you guys while I was thinking about it. About 215 here, and this is running right at 200. Remember before, it was cooler here, a little hotter here because we had the meat over here. Now that I've switched the meat, <laughs> the gauges have switched. So we've gone now to a little hotter over here, a little cooler over here. But the, what I'm pointing out is, the, the variance that was between them earlier when I first got here after my son's football game was there was a, a, a bigger difference, bigger variance between the two left and right. Now that the meat's heating up, the pit's starting to heat back up the temp, that I've got the fire going, now the gauges are starting to even out. They're gonna get even more even as the fire heats the pit back up to what was around 250 when I left earlier to go to the football game, which is over three hours ago. And uh, I'm gonna shut it off. And I'm actually going to go in and get my ribs ready because I didn't touch them earlier like I said it was when my wife came home. I got to putting chlorine in the pool and uh, uh, doing some things, get ready for my friends coming over. So I'm going to go in there now and actually get some ribs ready and I'm going to put the ribs on here. So when I turn the video on, you will see me, uh, I'll show you the ribs after I put them on. They're ribs, right? Not a whole lot to look at. But uh, I'm going to go take care of that. I'll be back in a little bit, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. It is 3.24. I've got my pork ribs, St. Louis style, put my phone in, I'm gonna put it in my pocket. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is talking about this pig getting back up the right? After I got back from the uh, football game, my son's game. We're running 225 here now, and we're running about two, oh man, this looks like maybe 230, 228, somewhere around there. So the pit's pretty much evened out again, like I mentioned that it would earlier that it would do. Just have to give it a little time, get your fire back up and running, get that meat back up to cooking, and you notice you don't see a whole lot of smoke coming out of here. I did add a couple little split logs to it, and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I say little split logs. I use a combination of wood. Um, let me find one. I'll be back. <coughs> I use a combination of woods. Uh, 
a lot of times, and I know y'all can't see me, but I'm over here where my wood stash is, and uh, I've got full cut split logs, and then I have also these logs that are full size, but they're cut a little smaller. Um, get them out here. I sell these at my shop. So when you buy a gator pit and wants to ship wood with you, we can. These are good, good pieces of wood right here. This is hickory, as you can see. Uh, they average about 12 inches, give or take. And they're good for pretty much any size pit or any size firebox. Um, I put two of these in, in this one just now. And I haven't been keeping up with the wood, so, but I think I'm on, uh, what, three? I think maybe six, six sticks that I've done since uh, we fired this thing up this morning. Which isn't bad considering what time it is and how long we've been running. Uh, six sticks, six of these, which are kind of like a half log, so to speak. But they're, they're cut nice size and diameter. Uh, they kind of vary, as you can tell. But you can buy these from me. We sell them for twenty-one dollars for uh, approximately a uh, twenty-one dollars for approximately a fifty-pound bag, <clears throat> and we can ship these by the pallet as well. We can get uh, fourteen to sixteen bags on a single forty by forty-eight pallet, which is a lot of wood. You figure on a long day's cook, depending on, again on what kind of pit you have. If you have a gator pit like this, then we'll go through typically one bag for the day. $21 that's uh that can be cheaper than charcoal to be quite honest and, and you're cooking with real wood again we can ship this stuff on pallets and when we ship that's the only way we ship it is on pallets we don't ship individual bags so if you want wood shipped from us uh, the wood by itself then order the whole pallet uh, again 14 to 16 50 pound bags on that pallet on average and That'll probably last you, most people, that'll last a year for most people. Uh, most people don't cook as much as I do. Uh, but, uh, you know, the average guy is going to cook once, maybe twice a month at most. Uh, and you figure a bag of cook on a long cook. <clears throat> but we do oak, hickory, pecan, and mesquite. Your four primary woods, oak, hickory, pecan, and mesquite. $21 for a 50-pound bag. And I've got the ribs. I'll fix to put the ribs on here. My friends are on their way over, um, and hopefully I can continue to keep shooting like this uh, as, as I'm working the pit and doing things with them and the kids here. Uh, it might get a little chaotic, you know. But guys, I'm just this is rich at home, but I'm you know with, with this family, this is what we do. Um, let's open up the pit. See, now we're running 250. So in that short amount of time, we were talking just now, what, a few minutes. Uh, this thing's 250 now, and over here we're we're two 230 ish somewhere around there, which is good because here's the deal. Here's your why's your variance. You've got two honking big pieces of meat sitting over here. Here you have nothing. Watch what happens when I put these ribs over here. And these are small small things of meat, so they're, they're probably not going to have that big of a, a a drastic effect on the gauge when when it comes to putting these little old pork sparrows on there. But uh, let's get them in. And again, you saw this was your average size shelf, and you saw I just opened my door with my meat pan. Uh, it's easy to do, guys. Uh, I'm going to pull my tray out just a little bit. I'm going to throw these racks up in here. I don't know if you can hear that sizzle. Guys, we're, we're cooking meat, man. We are cooking meat, and it's not sizzling like dropping fish in a crease bu uh, basket. It's just a real light hint of sizzle which is what you want because that means you're cooking it low and slow. And these are our meat gloves. You can buy these I think for $11.99 a pair. We may have a sale going on right now for a buck or two off. I'm not sure. You can, get, you can order these things on my shopping cart on my website GatorPit.net. Close my door up. I put those on the lower rack uh, for now. I've got plenty of room to play with. I'm going to wash this pan off uh, after a while. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because we're shooting a vid. But so we got briskets and butts, two racks of ribs. I'll come back later on before all this is done. And I'm going to put some sausage links on it that I've got. 
And I'm actually going to put a uh, pan of beans in there. We're going to smoke some beans in here as well. Uh, they're bush beans. I bought them. Yes, they're coming out of a can. I did not make these. Again, uh, this, this was not a planned cook. Uh, otherwise, I would actually be cooking Kirk's beans, which you uh, would get the recipe for those if you attend my cooking class. And also in our cookbook. Uh, Kirk's beans are, oh my God, they're, they're awesome. Awesome beans. Uh, but when you're, in a, when you're in a hurry and you need some decent beans, they actually taste pretty good. I'm not, I, don't, I didn't mean to insult them by decent. They're good beans. I doctor them up a little bit. I put some things in, in, the, in the pan of beans, and then I put the beans on here, and I let them bake in the pit or smoke in the pit for, I don't know, an hour. Doesn't take much. And uh, take them off, and we'll have everything done at the same time. I'm still pretty confident we'll have all this ready to eat by about 6.30 tonight, give or take. Um, that's it, guys. I got to get ready uh, for my friends to come over, and I will see y'all here shortly. I walked out here just to walk out and watch an A&M Tennessee game right now. Uh, I'm gonna pull the camera up here and show you what these gauges are reading. You know, I, I, my pits, uh, I'm gonna toot my own horn, my pits still amaze me at how easy they are to cook on. I chuckled just now when I said that, when I said I'm, I came out to check my pit. I, I don't know why, because I, I know it's, it's running even, I know it's cooking. I'm going to pull the camera over here and just show you. Uh, I'm not going to turn it off and then shoot it. I'm going to actually just walk over to it with the camera. So here we go. I'm going to unplug the power here. I want you to see these gauges, guys. That's 225-ish and 225-ish. I mean, they're spot on dead even. I've got rib... Uh, brisket and butts on this side. I've got two racks of ribs on this side. And you see there's no leaking out of my doors anywhere still. I'm going to keep pointing that out, guys. Gator pit. Look at these gauges, guys. We are running 225, 225, spot on, briskets and butts on this side, ribs on this side, no leaky doors. Look at that, clean smoke, no side leaks again still. I keep pointing all that out. Guys, this is a gator pit. Look at that gorgeous truck sitting out there. Ain't that just fine? Let me tell you something. If you bought a pickup truck and when you get out of it after you park and walk away and don't turn around and look at it, you need to bring it back buy you another truck. Every time I get out of this truck, I turn around and look at it. I just thought I'd share that with y'all. And yeah, I'm starting to feel a little better. My sinus meds are kicking in now. Got a couple of beers in me too, so I'm feeling, feeling a little better than I did earlier when I first started shooting this. Watching the A&M game too. They're winning, kicking Tennessee's butt. Hey y'all, it's Rich here. Sunday, the day after the Saturday queue I was videoing yesterday. Neighbors or friends came over. Friends came over and uh, we got to just hanging out and just letting the pit do what it was designed to do and let's just keep chugging along and uh, cooking those, those uh, briskets, butts and ribs and sausage. Uh, it was all great. We were eating by 7 p.m. last night. I think I first put the meat on at uh, around 11ish. I can't remember now, but around 11 yesterday, and we were eating by 7 p.m. And that was again the 15-pound brisket that I did trim down some, took some of the fat off of it. Uh, that was a eight to nine-pound pork butt bone-in that I did a little trimming on it as well, and then two racks of, of St. Louis uh, style or cut ribs and uh, two pounds of sausage and a large can of bush baked beans that I added and doctored up a little bit to add some more flavor to it and threw it on the smoker for a couple hours to get some smoke flavor in it and kind of, I guess you want to call it, bake it in the, in the cooker, which is excellent by the way. If you don't cook your beans 
uh, on your pit when you're cooking, you need to give it a try. I think you'll love it. And I think you're, everyone that you're serving those beans to is going to love it too. It does have a lot more flavor to your beans other than just heating it up on a pot or heating it up over your firebox in a, in a pot. Put it in a foil pan, put it in a baking pan, put it inside the smoker. Let it get some flavor added to it. Uh, what else we got? I think that's it. Uh, capping everything. Uh, 24 by 60. Captivator Mobile on my website at GatorPit.net. This is a quarter inch thick steel. It's quarter 24 diameter. 60 inches long, which is five foot. Two doors. Four sliding meat racks. Two slides in each door. Tuning plates. Stainless steel cool touch handles. Fully flanged doors that don't leak, as you saw in this video uh, of me cooking. Birdhouse stack was just a cool custom touch. Kind of signature bird stack. Signature. It's kind of Gator Pit's signature stack. Uh, we got a side door here for cleaning out. If somebody buys uh, uh, wants a, uh, one of these pits, you'll the backyard units. Most of them are going to come with this extra side door standard in the price. The Captivator, it's an option to it. I have it on here because again, this is a pit that we rent out daily in weekend rentals. So a lot of customers that rent it don't smoke; they grill. So we built in the grill ability. There's a charcoal grate down there that you can put in there. But it's our trailer frame, quarter inch thick, two by two tubing, quarter inch gussets, reinforced your stress points, uh, 3,500 pound axle, springs for a smooth tow down the road, uh, no swaying, it's, it's perfectly uh, balanced and, and weight distributed accordingly. Uh, again, we design our own trailers, we build our own trailers for that reason, so that our customers don't have to worry about this thing towing like crap going down the highway, especially if you start loading it up. Uh, and you'll see, you've seen people pulling trailers and pits, and that back end is just doing this number. That is a poorly designed trailer or, and or the weight distribution of it is horrible. It's wrong. Uh, we balance these out. We build the trailer based on what we know is going on it so that you don't have those issues. We build the trailers also knowing what its weight capacity is and where that weight's gonna be added to it so that you don't have those, those issues towing our trailers down the road. Firebox is a round firebox, obviously. It's quarter inch pipe, 24 inches long, 24 inches in diameter. It's got a heavy, thick angle frame, quarter inch thick fire grate. Uh, this pit's six years old, at least. I've replaced the fire grate in it one time. Everything else is original on it, uh, to include the paint job. Uh, I don't think we've repainted this. I've touched up the firebox a couple of times, but now I just I just squirt grease on it, cooking oil, and just letting that bake on there. As you can see, it's all black. Um, it's easier than having to touch the paint up periodically. We got a bulldog coupler. Screw jack, steel wheel that's removable in the jack, safety chains and hangers, standard light kit. I got a spare tire on the side over there. Um, what else we got? That's it. And you got plenty of storage around here. So, and some Texas artwork. Ash rake and fire pokers you saw earlier. You can order those through our shopping cart or our store, online store on our website at gatorpit.net. We also have a cooking school. We do four classes a year. They're usually quarterly. We're having one this October 22nd. 2016 was the last class for this year. Our next class is tentatively, tentatively scheduled for February of 2017. And they, they typically go February or uh, around February, March time, but we're definitely going to do February next year. And then we'll probably have one in June. And then we'll have, uh, we'll decide where we're going to have the other two after that. Uh, we may have, I think we'll, instead of having an October class next year, we may do a September class. Um, and then we may, if we do a September class, then we may have one more class uh, early November. Uh, a lot of people like to come up to that. If we do that November class like that, I like, because we're close to Thanksgiving and holidays, Christmas, I like to do fried turkeys and show people how to fry turkeys. Uh, and, and, but we'll say about all that. Uh, I'm rambling. I'm doing what I said earlier in the video is trying not to ramble. It's hard not to when you, when, when you love what you do. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Again, check out our website at GatorPit.net. View our, our, go through our YouTube channel. Go through my YouTube channel. I've got over 100 and something videos over there. I've got videos of me cooking on my Riches Edition. It's a great video. Start up fire down to the, the finished product. Uh, there's some tips and all that in there. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to get involved and in, in really detailed in what I do and how I do, uh, which is why I didn't show videos of me prepping my meat and rubbing it and doing things to it before I put it on the pit. Because I do cooking classes, it wouldn't be fair to my students for them to get, for them to, to pay for me to show them what to do and how to do it, and me give it out for free in a video on a YouTube channel. Um, 
So that wasn't the intent of this video. And some of y'all probably say, well, how can you show all this? How can you show all that? That's why, because I have a cooking school and I have students from all around the world that come to my cooking classes and uh, learn how to do what me and the other instructors uh, do. And they pay for that. So in all fairness to them, if you want to learn what I do and how I do it and improve your barbecue, take it to the next level, uh, I can tell you right now, everybody out there that cooks, some guys think they know it all. You never know it all. I don't know it all. The other two instructors that I cook with, they don't know it all. I've had competition cookers that have attended my classes that are very well known in Texas. Uh, top cookers, top 10 cookers in Texas that have attended my classes and they all, at the end of the day, said, you know what? I did learn some things from you. I thought I knew it all. I, obviously I don't. I did learn some tricks and tips from you. I'm gonna apply that to my competition cooking. And uh, chefs, caterers, uh, all say the same thing. Again, it, our, our, our satisfaction rate for my cooking classes is 100%. And if anybody wants to question that or doubt that, <laughs> come to my office. I'll show you the surveys that we, we give them at the end of the the end of the, uh, the questionnaire that we give them at the end of the class. Every student takes an anonymous uh, uh, question, gives an anonymous questionnaire. They don't put their name on it unless they want to. And it's about, I think, 15, 20 questions that we ask about the class, and then there's an open area down there where they can put any comments that they want. We have no, ne no negative comments, none, zero. It's 100% satisfaction rate. And that's saying something about our cooking classes and our instructors when you're talking about people that are coming from France, Australia, Thailand, Korea, Seoul, Korea, uh, Russia, uh, France, I don't know if I mentioned France, uh, Canada, Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Jamaica. I've got them coming all over the place. Uh, so with that 100% satisfaction rate from, from all those students that I've had over the years, it uh, says a lot about our cooking class. And some people think it may be expensive, but when you look at what you're paying for other pitmasters classes, you're, you're paying $1,000, $1,200. Our class is $500 for a full eight hour day. And you get a copy of the book that we wrote, uh, our barbecue book. You can only get that book if you attend our class. It is not available for sale. You have to attend the class to get this book. The book is over 60 full color pages of everything and more of what we cover in our class. You take that home, it's free. It's, you, know, you get it when you, when you register for the class, you get that book for free. It's only to our students, nobody else. So don't call me wanting a book. You're not going to get it. Attend the class and you'll get it. All right, I've rambled enough. I'm out of here. i got to go work in the yard and... Uh, Get ready to watch the Texans game at noon and make sure my Yeti cooler is still iced down with some good cold beer. And uh, I'm going to actually eat some leftover barbecue for lunch. See you. Rich Robin. Bye.